Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so um, welcome to this uh, fifth lecture on uh, Riemann surfaces and algebraic curves. So uh, let me briefly recall what we did in the the, the last lecture. Uh, it was uh, trying to give a Riemann surface structure on the cylinder. So the way we did it was essentially we took uh, the complex plane and uh, we went modulo uh, the uh, uh, a group of automorphisms of the complex plane which uh, is isomorphic to uh, the integers under addition and uh, th uh, for the generator of the group we took a translation uh, translation by a fixed vector. So what we did was we took uh, we fix uh, a complex number z0 and then we take the group uh, then we denote by T sub z0 uh, translation by z0. So uh, if you take uh, translations by uh, z0 and then uh, you take two such translations then you get translation by 2z0. So in this way what you get is uh, the set of uh, all possible integer combinations of uh, uh, integer multiples of this translation namely n times t z0 where n is an integer. This gives you a certain uh, group uh, and these uh, each element of this group uh, is a translation. In fact you know that uh, translation uh, n times t sub z0 is the same as t sub n z0 because uh, uh, t z0 is actually the map z going to z plus z0. So this group G is uh, isomorphic to the integers uh, and of course uh, under uh, so when I say group here the question is under what operation it is under the operation of uh, composition of mappings. So here uh, we have composition of mappings and here it is under the usual addition okay. So there is an isomorphism and this isomorphism is gotten by sending simply sending n times t sub, sub z0 to the integer n okay. So uh, this is just a group of translations by uh, integer multiples of a fixed complex number okay and you go modulo this group uh, you go uh, modulo this group and you get the cylinder okay. So this is the cylinder. at least uh, topologically and uh, then I told you that uh, once you do this you can transform uh, the cylinder into Riemann surface by giving a system of charts okay. So diagrammatically <coughs> uh, the situation was that uh, so if I recall that there is so here is my uh, so here is my cylinder uh, it is an infinite cylinder. So I will put this as dotted uh, lines to say that it extends uh, in both directions. Uh, so it is it is basically uh, S1 which is a circle cross R the, <coughs> the R being thought of as Z axis okay uh, and uh, uh, the S1 corresponding to the unit circle on the XY plane right and what we did was we we cut across uh, this uh, cylinder uh, and we obtained an, an infinite strip like this we obtained an infinite strip and uh, then basically since we wanted to have charts uh, from um, small neighborhoods uh, around a uh, given point on the cylinder to uh, the complex plane we had to somehow think of uh, this strip we had to somehow 
find the connection between the strip and the complex plane. So essentially what we did was we, we just spread we just repeated this strip on the complex plane and then we realized that you re repeating this strip gives you the complex plane. So basically you have <coughs> you have the complex plane C and then uh, if the vectors if the vector corresponding to the complex number Z0 is this then we think of the strip as uh, this strip. Um, so let me <coughs> draw this a little carefully. So it's <coughs> so this is uh, this is 90 degrees if you want, and so this is the strip here, okay. And then you have various copies of this strip <coughs> uh, that that give rise to uh, that essentially uh, uh, the union actually gives you the complex plane. And the way to come back is essentially to identify two points on the complex plane if they are translates by an integer multiple of Z0, and that is the same as actually going modulo the group G. All right, and that's how we uh, we got this complex structure. Uh, we, we got a complex structure on the cylinder, making it into a Riemann surface. Now, <coughs> uh, the the next point that we can ask is, uh, uh, well, in fact, the um, the the complex structure. So, what did we do? I mean, if you choose a point, um, let's choose a point, uh, um, say X on the cylinder and what is the what is the coordinate chart okay. So remember a coordinate chart was required at the point x so that you can identify it with an open subset of the complex plane and then you can transport the notions of holomorphicity uh, from the complex plane to this point to the neighbourhood of this point. So what we did was we given a point here we chose another point here in the complex plane let us let me call it z and <coughs> this map is precisely the uh, uh, if I may say the quotient map which I will call as pi and uh, this is the so this is my cylinder here I will denote it by script C and uh, uh, this map is just the map from C to C mod G which is which is the which is the cylinder and which sends every point to its equivalence class under G equivalence class under G means it is essentially the orbit of the point under G which is and what is the equivalence class it is simply the collection of all translates of that point okay. So you send a point to the collection of all of its translates which forms uh, an equivalence class here and all these equivalence classes together as a set uh, give you precisely the cylinder uh, C script C okay. So, <coughs> so this is my map and given a point x on the cylinder I choose a pre image z and then here is my uh, uh, map pi so pi of z is x so given a point here I choose a point there and uh, so let me write that down uh, pi of z is equal to x and then what we do is that you choose a sufficiently small disc uh, surrounding this point let me call that as d and uh, of course you choose the disc to be sufficiently small so that uh, it is far smaller than this than the uh, width of the strip which is mod z0 of course I am not assuming z0 to be 0 uh, I am really taking a non-zero vector here uh, which I which is implied but anyway let me say it. So there is a small disc here small enough disc and if you take pi of that disc that is you take the image of this disc under pi then you will get an open neighbourhood of x and the reason this is true is because pi is actually an open map okay pi is an open map it takes open sets to open sets. So <coughs> if I take a disc like this uh, in fact it will take any open set to an open set okay but uh, I am taking a small enough disc because I want this map uh, to be uh, injective okay because if the radius of the disc is large okay then there would be many points which go to the same point here okay. So, <coughs> uh, so pi of d uh, will be uh, this open set uh, surrounding x which is uh, which looks like a disc and why does it look like a disc because uh, if, uh, if I take pi from d to pi of d that will actually be a homeomorphism because uh, I can I it is an it is an open map and it is injective 
okay and the inverse is also continuous so what I can do is that I can take pi inverse okay I can take the map from the I can take the inverse map uh, pi inverse uh, which goes from pi of d to d okay and that will give me a homeomorphism of pi of d with an open subset of the complex plane namely d all right and this is going to this pair is going to give me uh, I this this pair is going to give me a coordinate chart okay and then <coughs> I explained that uh, you can get charts like this at various points okay and uh, so we have a, a covering of the cylinder by charts okay now of course that is not completely enough to give you a Riemann surface structure <coughs> what we require is that these charts uh, are compatible whenever they overlap okay and uh, that is also a condition that we checked last time uh, we found out that the transition functions are precisely translations by a certain multi integer multiple of z0 and these are of course by holomorphic maps okay these are certain certainly injective holomorphic maps they are, maps, they are, they are certainly holomorphic isomorphisms so since the transition functions are holomorphic uh, you have compatibility of the charts so this is an atlas and once this atlas is prescribed the cylinder becomes a Riemann surface okay and you can also see that the the natural map from C to uh, C mod G which is the cylinder the spy is a holomorphic map so this is also something that you can see that is obvious because <coughs> for a map to be holomorphic uh, basically uh, uh, holomorphicity is a local property so I will have to check that this map is uh, only locally holomorphic but locally uh, from a point on C to a point on uh, the cylinder I actually get uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the maps corresponding to the uh, inverse of this pi inverse namely pi restricted to d okay and uh, these are certainly holomorphic maps okay. So the moral of the story is that this is a holomorphic map okay and now you can again ask the same question as we asked in the earlier cases if you go back and uh, look at uh, uh, the earlier lectures when we were trying to give Riemann surface structures on the complex plane okay then I told you that there are only two possibilities namely the complex plane uh, and the unit disc okay and uh, the uh, in the case of the Riemann sphere uh, if you ask the question the question that uh, uh, how many Riemann surface structures you can give on the Riemann sphere then again the answer is, uh, th then the answer is that you can give only one up to isomorphism there is there is only one uh, on the on the real two sphere there is only one Riemann surface structure that you can give which is given by the Riemann sphere <coughs> to be accurate okay. So you so no matter what atlases you use whatever Riemann surface structure that you impose on the real two sphere it is going to be only isomorphic to the Riemann sphere the, the Riemann surface structure on the Riemann sphere okay. So that is the case of the sphere and you can ask the same question for the cylinder you can ask uh, how many Riemann surface structures I can give can I that one uh, that uh, is it possible that it is possible to give on the cylinder okay so that uh, this map is holomorphic and the answer to that is that there is only one up to isomorphism. So of course these are all facts that uh, require further techniques uh, for their proof but I am just telling them because you get a flavor of uh, what happens okay. Uh, so, <coughs> so let me state this theorem the set of uh, holomorphic isomorphism classes of uh, Riemann surface structures on the cylinder on the cylinder C is uh, is a singleton is a singleton okay and uh, it is represented
by the natural Riemann surface structure on the punctured plane. C star which is C minus the origin ok. So, uh, so uh, let me again explain the statement of the theorem. So, uh, even before I do that let me again say what it is that we are uh, we are trying to think of uh, we have a surface uh, real surface that we can uh, imagine in 3 dimensions to begin with and then we find various ways of turning it into a Riemann surface. And then the question is uh, how many different Riemann surface structures is it that we can get ok. And the answer to that is in the case of the cylinder the answer to that is there is only one ok. And what is that one? That one is uh, there is a very special representative for that and that is just C star which is C minus origin ok. So, uh, roughly uh, the, uh, the uh, if you want to heuristically understand why this could be true ok. Uh, the reason is that I have already told you that this g is isomorphic to z ok. So, it is essentially c mod z the, the cylinder is exactly c mod z alright. And if you know if you remember a little bit of uh, uh, complex first course in complex analysis you know c mod z, z is actually c star. Do you know how? It is in the uh, 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 in the following uh, exact sequence. So, you have 0 uh, let me write this z c c star uh, 1 ok. So, I uh, will explain this notation. So, you see here is the complex plane and here is a map z going to e power uh, uh, let me say uh, i z ok. Take z going to e power i z. Um, then um, of course, you know that this map is surjective this map is surjective uh, because every non-zero complex number has a logarithm ok. So, this map is surjective and um, uh, in, in, in mathematical notation uh, that is what it means to say that uh, uh, this, uh, this whole sequence is exact at this point. So, uh, a, a sequence of uh, uh, groups and group homomorphisms ok is said to be exact at a certain point if the kernel of the outgoing map is equal to the image of the incoming map ok. So, if I want exactness at this point then I the condition is that the kernel of the outgoing map should be the image of the incoming map ok. The kernel of the outgoing map is everything mind you I have put 1 here this 1 here represents the uh, multiplicative uh, the trivial multiplicative group under multiplication which has only the identity element for multiplication the trivial group, but with operation as multiplication. And mind you this map uh, the C star is also a group under multiplication ok. And this map the constant map C star to this uh, singleton group is of is obviously uh, going to, uh, going to have kernel C star because everything is going to 1. So, the kernel of this map is the whole of C star and the condition for exactness is that the kernel of this is the image of this and that is the same as saying that the image of this uh, is going to be it has to be everything which is true ok that is what exactness means here. And of course, uh, the this is con being the C here and the Z here are being considered as groups under addition ok. And of course, when you exponentiate the addition gets transformed into multiplication. So, <coughs> so on this side the first three groups are all groups under addition ok. And what about exactness at this point? The exactness at this point means that the kernel of this map has to be the image of this map. So, if C star identity element is 1 the only way e per i z is 1 is uh, uh, z should be a multiple of 2 n pi alright. But then uh, let me normalize this by uh, dividing by uh, 2 pi ok. So, instead of sending it to z to e power i z uh, let me send it to z to e power i z by 2 pi. So, this is a small adjustment that I will have to make so that I get uh, integers here. So, 
let me put it as 2 pi i z <coughs> okay. So, uh, so what is the um, uh, what is the kernel of this map the kernel of the, this map is by definition all the elements here which go to the identity element here the identity element here is 1. So, I want all the z such that e power 2 pi i z is 1 okay and uh, this will happen only if uh, z is an integer okay. So, <coughs> so this is 1 if and only if z is an integer and that means that uh, z has to come from here okay. So, I am just saying the kernel of this is equal to the image of this and that is exactness at this point okay. So, <coughs> let me write that down. So, we say that this is a short this is a short exact sequence this is a short exact sequence of groups okay and uh, so it is exact at this point. So, the kernel of this is the image of this and it is also exact at this point because the kernel of this is uh, is 0 which is the image of the 0 group here okay. So, this is a short exact sequence right and uh, what this tells you is that uh, C mod uh, so uh, uh, there is a map uh, the image is C star kernel is Z. So, what it tells you that C mod Z is actually C star if you go by this map if you go by this uh, is the sequence C mod Z is just C star. as groups and uh, that is exactly this is happening at the level of uh, uh, groups but this is exactly also, also what happens at the level of Riemann surfaces. So, that is the point the point is that uh, you take C modulo uh, this group of uh, translations which corresponds to a copy of Z. So, essentially you are looking at C mod Z and C mod Z is C star and therefore, the cylinder is actually C star okay as a as a Riemann surface okay and uh, by that I mean the cylinder is holomorphically isomorphic to C star right. So, <coughs> uh, so let me write a few more words so exactness here is uh, let me call let me call this as exp this map as exponential map is uh, exponential is surjective. Uh, and uh, exactness here here is uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, e power 2 pi i z is 1 if and only if z is an, an integer okay and um, well exactness at this point is just injective injectivity of this map ok. So, uh, I just I am just trying to um, allude to uh, the fact that uh, C mod Z is C star, and um, of course, mind you, this map, this map is also a holomorphic map. C to C star is an exponential map, and it's certainly a holomorphic map. So, uh, we are in this situation. You have a map from C to the cylinder, Riemann surface structure on the cylinder, uh, which is a holomorphic map. But immediately, the cylinder doesn't look like C star, if you want. To begin with, the cylinder doesn't really look like C star, but you can see it's uh, homeomorphic to C star because the cylinder is just S1 cross R <coughs> okay and that R you know the the real line R is uh, homeomorphic to in fact diffeomorphic to any interval interval okay and you choose that interval to be 0 comma 1. So, if you think of it as S1 cross 0 comma 1 <coughs> uh, um, yeah I mean it is a it is uh, C star can be thought of as uh, being given by polar coordinates namely one uh, coordinate theta which comes from S1 okay the other coordinate given by the uh, the distance to the origin which is essentially a real number. So, you can actually think, think of C star as S1 cross the interval 0 comma infinity okay but that is the same as S1 cross uh, R because the interval 0 comma infinity 
is uh, is uh, diffeomorphic to R. Okay, you can always use uh, uh, the the tan function, you know, to uh, and its inverse to map any open interval onto any other open interval, R to the whole real line. Okay, so they are all they are all the same. Okay, so <coughs> um, fine. So let's go on to um, uh, look at this. Uh, let's so let's go on to look at the case of a torus. So, um, so this is what I do. So here is uh, uh, so I start with the torus. Start with the torus, and uh, somehow given a point on the strip on the on the torus. Um, let me call that as X. Okay, um, I want to get hold of uh, uh, a coordinate neighborhood around this, uh, which looks like an open subset of uh, the complex plane. That's how I get a chart. So how do I how do I connect this to the complex plane? So the the, <coughs> the idea is very simple. Uh, is is very similar. Is very simple and it's very similar to what we did here. Okay. So what you do is you take the torus and you first cut it along vertically, like this. Okay, you make a cut, and what you will get up get is essentially the cylinder. You you will get a you will get the cylinder here. Okay, but of course, mind you that uh, uh, this is not the infinite cylinder. So I'll have to there's one end of it which is uh, with the boundary circle is here. Okay, and uh, there is another end of it which is uh, kind of uh, without the boundary. And I'm supposed to if I if I if I identify this. This circle, uh, essentially, with this, if I paste it, okay, uh, then this is your torus. So let me also include this boundary circle and say that uh, you know these two circles need to be identified, okay. Then I get the torus, but this is still not the plane. So what you do is you make, just like the case of the cylinder, you make one more cut, okay, and you open it up. What you get is uh, a rectangle okay so this uh, this circle has become this edge of the rectangle this circle has become this edge of the rectangle and this line here has split into two edges that corresponds to these two edges so all i am saying is that uh, you can go back uh, by simply identifying identifying these two edges will give me the cylinder and then uh, in that process this is transformed into this circle this is transformed into that circle and then identify the circles you get back the torus okay now but the point is i want uh, i want a plane so the natural way is to do exactly as we did there just like we propagated the strip here uh, to that is we repeated the strip to get the whole plane it's obvious that you know you just have to repeat this uh, this rectangle to get the whole plane and then uh, if you go back to this uh, uh, philosophy of trying to get the cylinder as a quotient of the complex plane in this case also you can get the torus as a quotient of the complex plane the only thing is now that your group is not controlled by one vector it is controlled by two vectors namely you get a copy of z direct some z or z cross z okay. So let me write that out so what we do is uh, we take we take uh, you fix two two complex numbers we fix two complex numbers let me call them as z0 z1 of course uh, I should mention there that uh, uh, z0 is non zero so you know let me put c minus zero to be very strict so that I do not end up uh, uh, taking z0 to be zero which will then uh, give me nothing because I have translation by zero, which is just the identity map, and I, I don't want that. Okay, so um, in the same way, I'll fix two complex numbers here, which are uh, which are uh, uh, non-zero. Okay, just to be sure that there are no such uh, hiccups. And uh, what we do is again look at translations by these two complex numbers. Okay, so you look at the group G, which is given by uh, trans translations by integer multiples of these two complex numbers. So it is the group G is given by uh, n t, t sub z naught plus m 
uh, t sub z1 where uh, n and m are integers okay. Uh, so this uh, this essentially means translate by uh, n times z0 then translate by m times z1 and the order in which I do it is immaterial because they commute okay and I get a group and the group G again in this case is isomorphic to Z cross Z and uh, again what is the uh, what is the group operation on the left side on the left side it is composition of mappings okay. So uh, composition of translations is again a translation and on the right side it is addition it is the product group under addition okay and you get an isomorphism by simply sending um, any such element uh, n times t z0 plus m times t z1 to the uh, ordered pair n comma m which is an ordered pair of integers okay. So um, now what we do is that um, you can you can now we have the whole complex plane so let me draw a diagram and uh, uh, so we have uh, so here is my z0 uh, and uh, here is my z1 um, and you know I, I get this uh, um, I get this whole plane divided into you know a grid uh, formed by rectangles whose edges are given by uh, you know z0 and z1 and, and, and they are translates okay. So of course you know I really want a rectangle okay and to be more strict I must make sure that z1 and these two vectors are not the same direction okay that is also important because if the two if both the vectors are in the same direction then I am not going to get any uh, I am not going to get a rectangle. So I will have to put that condition there as well okay so let me put that with uh, let me write z1 by z0 not, not a uh, real number okay basically I want two linearly independent vectors uh, two complex numbers which are linearly independent over R okay these two vectors should not be in the should not be multiples of one another I do not want that in that case I will not get a rectangle basically I want to get a rectangle and in fact uh, the point is um, it may not even be a rectangle in general it could be just a parallelogram okay this this angle need not be 90 degrees so you could have even a parallelogram but anyway it does not matter. So you see um, the point is that the the whole complex plane is divided into a grid like this of uh, various uh, uh, translates of this uh, of this uh, uh, parallelogram and this parallelogram um, is called the fundamental parallelogram okay and the whole complex plane is just translates of this. So in fact I will have uh, so I should also draw this line okay and it will go on like this. So, <coughs> so here is my uh, here is the whole plane divided into rectangles, and uh, again, uh, if I now take the whole complex plane and uh, go modulo this group uh, C mod G, what I'll get is the torus, okay? Because <coughs> I'm just identifying uh, points which are translates of each other by an integer multiple of uh, Z naught and an integer multiple of z1 okay. So c mod g will give me be, will be the, uh, the torus okay. Uh, <coughs> let me call that uh, uh, let me call this torus as uh, so this is uh, let me call it as t uh, uh, let me call it as just t okay. So, so this will be the torus t <coughs> okay and um, I am I am thinking of T as a uh, as a real surface so it is a it is a two dimensional real surface okay. So let me put T2 <coughs> uh, uh, but it is not to be confused with uh, T cross T or something like that okay. So this is my torus so when I write T2 I mean the real 2 torus okay the considered as a subset of the real 3 space okay 
and <coughs> and when I say C mod G will be the uh, torus T2 what is going to happen is um, what I mean by that is that there is a natural map from C to C mod G okay which again I will call as pi alright and which will send any complex number Z to the equivalence class of uh, uh, that complex number right and uh, then uh, uh, the set of equivalence classes is going to give me uh, uh, essentially at least topologically the, the torus okay. So uh, again I can uh, uh, again you will see that uh, it is very easy to give a coordinate chart at a point namely we do exactly as we did there so what we do is you give me a point x <coughs> on the cylinder uh, choose a point z uh, if you want uh, any point z in the complex plane okay such that z goes to x under this map pi okay and choose a sufficiently small disc surrounding this point now make sure that this disc is uh, smaller than the rectangle in which it lies of course uh, if the if this point is going to lie in one of the edges of the rectangle it does not matter but make sure that the, the size of this the radius of the disc is very small okay uh, uh, sufficiently small uh, then you can check that uh, again pi will be an open map okay and therefore pi of this disc will give you an open uh, disc like neighborhood here pi d okay and then you have a coordinate chart so you get uh, for uh, x in the torus uh, fix uh, z in c with pi of z is equal to x uh, choose d an open disc sufficiently small centered at z then pi of d is a disc like open neighborhood of x and gives a ch and gives the chart uh, so let me continue here and gives the chart let me okay let me write here itself the chart uh, uh, pi of d uh, comma pi restricted to d inverse. So pi from d to pi of d is going to be uh, an uh, homeomorphism uh, and that is because you have chosen d sufficiently small okay and uh, since it is a homeomorphism it is inverse is also a homeomorphism and this is this homeomorphism is what is going to give me an identification of pi of d with d and that is a chart okay and again you can check that um, uh, uh, these collection of charts are uh, going to give you an atlas uh, that is because uh, you can check that wherever they intersect the transition functions will now be just translations by uh, a multiple of uh, an integer multiple of z0 and some integer multiple of z1 and these of course these are certainly going to be uh, by holomorphic maps I mean holomorphic isomorphisms okay. Therefore uh, the compatibility of these charts is going to give you an atlas and with this atlas you are going to end up making uh, C mod G uh, that is uh, the torus into a Riemann surface okay. So this is T2. And of course it is a Riemann surface structure that depends on your choice of uh, Z0 and Z1 okay. So uh, the, the situation is uh, 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 situation is very similar to that of a cylinder in trying to get hold of the Riemann surface structure but the question is uh, again the we can ask the same question how many such Riemann surface structures that you is it that you can put on the on the torus uh, which are all you know non isomorphic that is distinct uh, Riemann surface structures how many distinct Riemann surface structures are there on the torus that you can actually put. So there is an answer to that so let me write that down uh, so, so let me write a couple of uh, statements here uh, 
So I will just put an aside here and write uh, uh, easy to check that the transition functions, functions uh, are uh, elements of G um, uh, and hence and hence we get an atlas. So I just I just record that the board. Uh, so now let me go back and uh, uh, give you this theorem. Uh, how many uh, Riemann surface structures, distinct Riemann surface structures, uh, that you can put on a torus? So again, this theorem also involves the proof of this theorem again involves some more uh, further techniques, more advanced techniques that we will develop. But it's important that you should know what you get, what you would get eventually. So let me write that down. So so here's the theorem. The the set of uh, uh, holomorphic isomorphism classes classes uh, of Riemann surface structures on a on a real uh, torus. T2 actually basic to the complex plane okay to C the complex plane okay. So which means that you know uh, you can give as many uh, distinct Riemann surface structures in the torus as there are complex numbers okay and uh, this there is more to this story. Uh, in fact, what happens is the set of uh, iso holomorphic isomorphism classes of Riemann surface structures on a real torus that set itself becomes a Riemann surface. Okay. The amazing thing is that the set uh, of isomorphism classes okay, of uh, Riemann surface structures that itself becomes a Riemann surface, and if you consider that Riemann surface structure, then this bijective map from that Riemann surface to C is an isomorphism of Riemann surfaces. So much more happens. Okay. So let me write that. In fact, uh, let me call this set as something. Uh, let me call them. Call it as M1. Uh, okay. In fact, M1 um, acquires naturally. The structure of a Riemann surface of a Riemann surface, and with this structure, the above bijection with C becomes a holomorphic isomorphism. So that is the amazing thing. So let me end by uh, just uh, uh, giving uh, you a few words about uh, the notion of moduli. So this was uh, this go the, the term moduli goes uh, back to Riemann, okay, and uh, uh, he was looking at uh, Riemann surface structures on a torus. So this is the, this is the one torus, but you know I can uh, also have a G torus, namely. Uh, something that looks like this a torus uh, with so many holes say with g holes so you know i can i can look at things like this so this is a g torus okay so uh, it's just g of these toruses just stuck to each other uh, and the way you stick it is by removing a disc like neighborhood from both and just sticking it sticking the boundaries together okay. So this is a G torus and uh, Riemann was trying to look at the uh, 
uh, various uh, Riemann surface structures that you can the complex structures that you can put on this okay and uh, the set of isomorphism classes of these uh, 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 complex structures gave rise to a certain uh, set let us call it as Mg which is M1 when you put G equal to 1 okay and Riemann found that you see uh, that this space itself had a nice structure okay he found that this space had this had a structure by which you can speak of holomorphic functions on the space only thing was that this space was no longer a Riemann surface uh, namely it was not one dimensional it was higher dimensional. So you need a higher dimensional analog of uh, Riemann surface and that is called a complex manifold okay. So uh, Riemann found that uh, the this set of holomorphic isomorphism classes of Riemann surface structures on this namely this one naturally became a complex manifold and that was very amazing okay and so it has been um, uh, uh, and in fact he also found that uh, the dimension uh, he found a formula for the dimension of the space and uh, he called it a modelized space okay. So the, uh, the rich area of modelized theory actually investigates such questions namely uh, you take an, an underlying real surface or, a, or a more generally even a real object which could be higher dimensional manifold and try to put various complex structures on it and then ask this question uh, that whether the set of isomorphism classes under that complex structure or of, of the various complex structures that you get whether that set has a natural structure and it is amazing uh, uh, that it has always been so. It, I mean it is it is God given and it is amazing that uh, uh, trying to look at the parameter the, the set of isomorphism classes that set automatically has some geometric structure and uh, that is the kind of motivation to study model I theory. So I will uh, also keep making uh, several remarks uh, during the course of these lectures to give you also some idea about the model I theory of Riemann surfaces okay. So we will stop here. Thank you.